Hello parents, this video is to teach you how to solve long division problems um, in fourth grade. In fourth grade, some students' brains are developed enough to where the traditional method is very easy for them, but other students are not quite ready for that yet. Um, there was some research done and they decided that fourth graders, the best way for them to learn and transition into the traditional method was by using uh, a type of model. So we have three different models that we use in fourth grade, and students are welcome to use whichever model is easiest for them. Um, it's good for them to be familiar with all three, but then once they are familiar with them, then tell them to pick the one that they understand the best, the one that makes sense the most to them, and to stick with that one. So I'm going to use the same math problem for each one. It's Five, um, 687 divided by 5. And then um, just like when we were in school, we used dad, mom, sister, brother. Um, we also use an acronym. I've kind of changed it up, up a little bit, and a lot of fourth grade teachers also use this one. Um, it is, does McDonald's sell cheese burgers? And so it's the same concept. We added in a C in there um, to help students re remember to check their uh, remainder to see if they need to keep going or if they need to stop and do something different. So let's get started. The progression that I have here is typically the easiest progression for students to learn. So usually they first learn the box method. Once they understand that one, they move to the area model and then partial products and traditional. If they move to one and it's really difficult, just try to do the few problems that you have to do in that method, but then move them back to the one that they feel most comfortable with and stick with that one whenever they're solving problems that don't say you have to solve it this way. They will eventually be able to do all of them. In fifth grade, they do learn the traditional method and they review these uh, models to help solve, but they'll get there. So. Let's start with the box method. The box method and the area model are very similar. When I get to the area model, I'll explain how they are just a tad bit different. All right, so the box method. You are going to take um, 587, and just like it suggests, you're gonna put it in a box. Now, if I had more room, then this would be a lot bigger box, but because I'm working with a limited amount of space, um, the box is kind of small. So you're, you will still have your divisor, divisor out here on the side, and then you have your numbers on the inside. You're gonna draw lines between each number to help you divide. So the way I like to do with my students is I ask them, um, or I tell them that the numbers on the inside of the box are how many M&Ms that they have, and the number on the outside of the box is how many friends they have. Now, with this method, you ignore these two numbers right here to begin with, and you only focus on the number that's in this column of the box. Once you solve that column of the box, then you move on to the other boxes and kind of add to it each time. So if I have six M&Ms, do I have enough M&Ms to give my five friends an M&M? And the answer is yes, so we're dividing right now. How many M&Ms will each of my friends get? If this was a larger number, we would skip count by fives to see what number that is, but since this is a smaller number, we know that it's one time. So that's divide. Now I'm gonna multiply. One times five is five. I'm going to subtract. 6 minus 5 is 1. I'm going to check my remainder. Is 1 smaller than 5? Yes, it is. So I'm going to give it a check. Now I'm going to bring up. This is a little bit different from parents. So I'm going to bring that 1 to join the 8. Now, if I have 18 M&Ms, and I'm ignoring these two columns now, I'm only focusing on the middle column. If I have 18 M&Ms, is that enough M&Ms to give my five friends an M&M? Yes, it is. So now I'm gonna skip count by fives till I can get as close to 18 as possible but not go over 18. Five, 10, 15, 20 is too much so I have to stick with 15. So my three that's on my fingers goes to the top. Now I'm gonna multiply. 
3 times 5 is 15. Now I'm going to subtract. 18 minus 15 is 3. I'm going to check my remainder. Is 3 smaller than 5? Yes, it is. So I give it a check. Now I'm going to bring up. So I'm going to bring that 3 up, and it's going to join the 7. Now I have 37. Is 37 M&Ms enough to give my friends M&Ms, my five friends? Yes, it is. So again, I'm going to skip count. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, and it's 37. So if I go to 40, that's too much. So it's going to be 7 that's going to go on the top. Now I'm going to multiply. 7 times 5 is 35. I'm going to subtract. 37 minus 35 is 2. And now I'm going to check my remainder. Is 2 smaller than 5? Yes. And then I'm going to bring up. So this 2 is going to become the remainder of 2. So you can see that my answer is 137 remainder 2. Okay. Now let's move on to the area model. This would transition into this. The area model also uses a box, but it places more of a focus on place value than it does um, staying in your column. Some teachers call area model and box method the same thing, but they are actually two different ones. Um, box method makes you focus on a column, whereas area model focuses on the place value. So there's two distinct differences, but if you if I post a video and you see that it's called the same or I mix up, they are different methods. So let's do the area model. Because this has three digits and my biggest digit is in the hundreds place, my box is going to have three boxes. So I'm going to draw that. It's going to be a little bit small because of working with limited space. Okay, now this is going to be my hundreds. This is my tens. And this is my ones place. Hundreds, tens, and ones. I'm going to write 687 all in here. And that's where I'm going to start with it. And I'm still going to have my divisor over here on the side. Now, what this is wanting you to do is it's pretty much wanting you to imagine that if you had 600 divided by 5, and you're going to start with 100, and then go to 200, and then 300, and see how close you can get to 600 without going over 600. Because we're in the hundreds place, we're going to start with 100. When we move to the tens place, we'll start with tens, then go to 20s, 30s, 40s, etc. With ones, we'll start one, two, three. And so that's how this one works. So I can see here that I can only put five into six one time. So it's going to be 100. So this up here is going to be 100. Sometimes I tell the students to make sure you look because if you know that you're trying to put five into six, how many other digits are there? Well, there's two other digits there. So those two other digits are essentially going to become zeros on the top of your problem. And that seems to make a little bit more sense to them usually than this does. But every kid is different. So we're going to now multiply five times 100 is 500. We're going to subtract. We've got 7, 8, and 1. Now this, we're going to check our remainder. Is this number bigger than this number still? Yes. So it gets a check. And now I'm going to bring up again. So these 187 are going to go in there. Now I'm going to start with 10 because now I'm essentially saying 180, I'm sorry, 180, because I'm looking at the tens place, divided by 5. How many times can 5 go into 180? But it's really going to be 18. So if I think about 5, 5 times 10 is 50. 5 times 20 is 100. 
five times 30 is 150. So I kind of, it's almost like you start with 10 and be like, no, I think I can keep going. 20, no, I think I can keep going. 30, that's 150. 40, that's 200, that's too big. So then I have to come back here. That's almost what kids are supposed to be doing in their brain as they go through this process. So this answer up here is going to end up being 30 because that's the closest to 187 without going over. And everywhere there's a line, you get a plus sign, just like when we did uh, multiplication. So five times 30 is 150, we multiplied. Now we're gonna subtract, we get seven, three. So 37 is left over. I'm gonna move that 37 over to this column and I'm gonna start the process over. One times five is five, two times five is 10, three times five is 15, four times five is 20, five times five is 25, six times five is 30, seven times five is 35, eight times five is 40, that's too big, so I have to go back to seven. So seven times five is 35 subtract and we have two check our remainder it's less than five so we're done but we still have to bring this up as a remainder of two but now you take these three numbers and you add them together and your answer becomes 137 i'm out of room remainder two and that's how you do the area model and the way that this one is different from this one is this one you focus on one number at a time and you're focusing on the column. This one you're focusing on the place value of taking hundreds out and then taking tens out. So that repeated subtraction, but repeated subtraction of how many hundreds can be taken out, how many tens can be taken out, how many ones can be taken out, and that's how you do this one. Now we're going to move to partial products. And to me, partial products is very, it's kind of a mix between the area model and our traditional method of long division. Um, partial products is going to go down like our traditional method, and you're going to subtract like our traditional method, but you're going to take out hundreds, tens, and ones like our area model. So let's go ahead and do this one. Um, most teachers have um, students draw this one kind of in a weird way, and you'll notice that. So you'll do five, and then you're going to do this. You're going to draw a long line down the side of it. So you'll have 687 in here. Some teachers have students draw a long line right here and write the numbers that would traditionally go on top up here. Other teachers have them write them on top. And I'll show you the difference whenever um, we get closer to the end. So again with this one, if I start with hundreds, how many times can I take five out in hundreds? Well, it's going to be a hundred times. So I would put my hundred over there. Some teachers put, have students put their hundred, they leave it like a normal and they would have their students put a hundred up here. Some teachers do that. I kind of prefer this way and you'll see both ways. So five times 100 is 500. Now we'll subtract and we get 187. Now we're gonna focus on the tens. Can I take 50 out? Can I take 100 out? Can I take 150 out? Can I take 200? 200 is too many. So that means that I can take 150, which would be multiplying by 30. So five times 30 is 150. And so then I'm gonna subtract and it's gonna be 37. And now I'm gonna focus on tens, or I'm sorry, on my ones place. Can I take five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, so now I'm going to multiply by 7. So 5 times 7 is 35. I'm going to subtract, and it's going to leave me 2. 
Now I'm going to add these numbers together, which would give me 137, and my remainder would be 2. Some teachers, instead of, they have students do this, but they would not have these over here. They would have them write 100, and then they would have them write 5 times 30, and then they would have them do 7 up here, and then add those together, and then you would still get 137 remainder too. So there's two different ways to do that one. And then finally, our traditional method of long division. So we're going to just do it the regular way that parents are used to. I feel like this method kind of combines a few elements from each of these to be able to get to that. Um, it is good with the area model for them to recognize place value and again with partial products. Box method is a good way to start because it helps them focus on one small number at a time instead of such a large number, which can be overwhelming for some kids. But then as they are able to move through these progressions, they'll eventually be able to pick up on this traditional method a lot quicker um, because they'll see that it's just kind of combining some of the elements of each of these. So just like how we learned it, will five go into six? Yes, it'll go in one time. So one times five is five. Subtract, we have one left over. Now we're gonna check our remainder is one less than five. Yes, so I can keep going, bring down my eight. How many times will five go into 18? Five, 10, 15, so three times. Three times five is 15. I'm gonna subtract that and I have three left over. Is three less than five? Yes, then I'm right. Bring down this last number, 37. Um, how many times can five go into 37? Seven times, five times seven is 35. I'm gonna subtract and I get two left over. Is two smaller than five? Yes, so I can keep going, but there's not another number to bring down, so that means this remainder comes up here and becomes remainder two. So that is all of the different methods for long division. Again, in fourth grade, we focus on either a box method, area model, or partial products. Um, as long as students are able to get one and be able to do it well, that's what our goal is. Um, but again, let them focus on the one that's best and easiest for them. If you want to go ahead and teach them traditional, that is just fine. Um, they will eventually have to learn traditional method. And if their brains are ready for it, then that's fantastic. And they can just do it the traditional way. Um, but if they're struggling, then I would recommend going back to one of these three models and letting them use one of those to be able to help them do long division. That's all I have for you. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you in our next video.